It is no joke to say that I learned more in the four months after starting my first business than I did in the entirety of my four years in college. Now, that's not to say I didn't learn anything of value in college, but the lessons I learned in business were far, far more valuable, not just to my financial bottom line, but also to me as an individual in my personal growth. And I want to share with you some of those lessons here today. Number one is that actions move the needle, not intentions. I talk about this so much that I feel like a broken uh, record at this point, but the universe doesn't care how you feel. It only cares what you do. And so if there's something that you want in life, then you have to take action to go get it. And in my experience, uh, a bias towards action is uh, pretty much the requisite to solving most problems that you might have. And so in life, if there's something uh, that you have an inspiration, you have a thought that you think I want to maybe go after this goal, this ambition, whatever it is, then take action. Don't sit around planning and intending and wanting and wishing and dreaming and trying to affirmate it into existence. Like just take action. And I know that's really simple uh, in, in theory, but very difficult in, in practice. But stop overthinking, start doing. Because in my, in my experience, uh, most of us are guilty of overthinking at one point or another, but practically nobody is guilty of over executing. Like you can always take more action. So the second lesson that I learned is that speed results from clarity. Think about that. Speed results from clarity. The more clear you are about where it is that you're trying to go and in, in the, in the, the obstacles standing between you and the goal, the more clearly you can navigate the path ahead. Uh, just imagine that you're driving a car down a, a, a highway in the middle of the night and it's raining and you got your windshield wipers on and you can barely see 10 feet in front of the, the headlights, right? You're going to go slower. You're going to go slower, not because the road won't allow you to go faster, but because you don't have confidence. You don't have clarity about what's ahead and you would be a psychopath to floor it into the darkness. So when you are fast without clarity, you end up in a ditch. <laughs> So if we can get clarity about where we're going in the middle of the day, we're driving on that same freeway and we have perfect clar clarity, we have we can see visible uh, visibility out to the horizon, then we can go faster with confidence that we're not going to get into a catastrophic accident. So I want you to think about, OK, how do I get clear about what it is that I'm trying to accomplish? Where am I going? And then apply the speed of action towards that. But don't just, you know, go willy nilly acting into into a ditch. Don't be a fool. Number three. Success comes to those who are too stupid to quit. Now, here's the truth is that when you're beginning, you will probably, despite your best efforts, you will end up in a ditch at some point. <laughs> most people, they will, they, most people won't even get started. They won't even get into the car or the entrepreneurship vehicle because they're afraid of uh, the, the, the reality, which is that most people will end up in a ditch at one point or another. And they don't want that. And so they just stay on the sidelines, keep doing the thing that they're doing. Now, the people that do get in the car of entrepreneurship, they will at some point end up in the ditch. And most people end up in the ditch and they go, okay, well, I guess I'm done. I'm done. That's it. The people who are successful are the ones who go, okay, well, I landed in the ditch. How do I get out and keep going? Oh, I landed in the ditch again. Okay. How do I dig it out? How do I get back on the road and keep going? You have to be too stupid to quit. You got to just keep getting the car back on the road and keep going despite the odds, which say, hey, it's probably just a matter of time until you end up back in the ditch. But at a certain point, after you've landed in enough ditches, you start to go, you know what? I don't think there's a single ditch I can't get out of anymore. <laughs> and that is a much better place to be in life than to be the person who tries so hard to avoid the ditch in the first place. Because life's a ditch. You ain't getting out unless you have the skills to get out. And you're going to end up there eventually at one way, one way or another. So number four is that very little of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis actually matters. And this is kind of humbling, um, but it's true is that like we overestimate the importance of so much of what we do. And you don't, the truth is like, you don't really know downstream effects of the actions you're taking right now and how impactful they're really going to be in three months, six months, a year, 10 years from now. So short of having like perfect knowledge of what the future holds and how impactful the activities you're doing actually will be, all you can really do is do a lot. Just do a lot of stuff. And it goes back to the, the action, uh, the bias towards action. Like the more that you do, the luckier that you get because the more opportunities that you, you've given yourself to be exposed to luck. And so don't waste so much time worrying about what you're doing, if it's the right thing or not. Just do more of it. And then iterate once you've found success and signal. Once you start to get a little bit of traction, you go, hmm, 
okay, something I did right there has led me to getting some kind of traction. Maybe I should do more of that. And then just double down into the thing that is working. But in the beginning, you don't know what's going to be the most impactful thing. So just do a lot and keep iterating over and over and over until you find that traction and then go hard, go hard at that very few number of things that actually do move the needle. Because in my experience in business and in life, like you could probably distill down like the true needle movers down to like three to five things, right? If you were really to distill down what a good life is the result of, I would, I would hazard that it's the result of these five things, having a strong mindset, having strong health, having good financial wealth, having, um, uh, abundant skills to, to deal with whatever life throws your way and having amazing relationships. I challenge you, like, what else would you add to that? Maybe, maybe if you're a spiritual person, you could throw that into there as well. I'd put that under the category of relationships, but like life is pretty simple. Business is no different distill it down to the fewest number of levers that actually matter. Problem is, again, you don't really know what those are going into it, so you just have to figure it out as you go. And let's talk about last but not least, the the most important metrics in business and in life, they cannot be tracked on a spreadsheet. It's not return on investment. It's not return on invested capital. It's none of those things. And like, it's so easy to put those numbers on a spreadsheet and me measure the gross margins and the profitability of this, this endeavor and then say that's the most important thing. But the truth is the most important metrics are return on karma, return on time, return on impact, return on love. You can't measure those things. You can't measure them. So don't get too hung up on the fact that it can't be modeled on a spreadsheet. Don't lose sight. Going back to what I just talked about previously, like very few things in life really matter. Those things, love, karma, impact, those things do matter. And so just because you can't measure them, don't lose sight of them. Don't sacrifice those for something that is infinitely abundant and commoditized. Something like, I don't know, money. You don't need money, right? All the best things in life, those return on karma, return on love, return on impact, you can have it for free right now. So don't get so hung up looking towards the future, trying to trade these things that are priceless and that you already have for something that you think will make you happy and will bring you these things, right? The money won't do that. Money is just another ends to a means or means to an end. So just as you're on this journey, my encouragement is that you will end up in, di in ditches. It'll be very difficult along the way. And the more that you can keep perspective about why you're doing what you're doing and ultimate goal of the thing isn't just to make money. It is in fact, just to create a life of impact that can positively influence your world, the world of your friends, your family, but also just your community at large. And I think if you can keep that in, in mind, it helps you, helps you do the work that's necessary on the days when it, all you want to do is hide your head in the sand and do nothing. And there will be plenty of those days. So those are some lessons that I learned just in the first four to six months after starting my very first business. It took me many years to really internalize the lessons. It's one thing to like learn at the first time. It's another thing to like master the lesson. I'm still mastering some of these, but hopefully by sharing them with you, it will accelerate your rate of learning and you will get to wherever it is that you're trying to go faster and with fewer ditches along the way. I'll do it for me, guys. I'll see you in the next episode.